yes. All right. I'm going to just hit that button. All right. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Whatever the time is for you. I'm Allie Dosnell. Thank you so much for joining me in this class today. Um, we are going to be making a gorgeous fall tumbler. This one is not entirely complete. It's going to need another coat of um, resin, but that's part of the class. I just wanted to show you that. But I do have a few other completed tumblers that I wanted to show you that we've done in some of these Michael's classes. This is a mica swirl tumbler. Um, and this actually uses some of the uh, glow in the dark and color changing, you know, based on, on sunlight and um, temperature. So that's kind of fun. This was a winter tumbler we did, kind of a winter wonderland tumbler. Um, and then there's um, this pretty um, a dip, dip uh, tumbler. So we did the paint dipping with that one. Um, so I just wanted to take a minute to introduce myself um, and then you guys let me know who you are and where you're at and say hello in the chat. I live um, in Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. Um, and I have five kids and a wonderful husband um, and four of those five have moved out of the house, they're adults. And then we have a 12 year old at home with us. Um, we also have a little Yorkie that's in here just on the floor in her little bed. So, um, but I've been working for, we are memory keepers for over 10 years, for 11 years. Um, and I love working with them. I manage their social media. I um, represent them, I guess you could say I'm the brand ambassador, the face of the brands. So I represent them on, on TV. I represent them at trade shows and workshops. Um, I do their YouTube videos. So it's been a really fun experience. I love crafting. I started as a paper crafter and moved on to all kinds of other crafts. So I do lots of other things now as well. Um, so let's see, we've got hi from New Detroit, from New Jersey. Welcome. Let's see, did I miss? Let me pull up in that chat so I can see. Hi from Iowa, Virginia, California. I'm from Florida. Hi, everyone. New York, Arizona. Oh, we used to live in Arizona years ago. Love it. Awesome. Canada. Welcome. Atlanta, North Carolina. So fun. So glad you guys could join me. Um, and feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go along. And there will be some moments during the class that I'll be able to pause and answer questions. Um, so I'll definitely take a look at those as we go. Um, and Kelly is kind enough to, to watch those for me too. So she'll call anything out that I miss. So, all right, so I'm excited. Okay, so let me just um, tell you a little bit about the Spin It program. Um, we partnered with Michaels a few years ago to introduce the first dedicated tumbler making program of any, of any craft store. So, um, and we also brought in the first bulk glitter offering um, at Michael's as well. So the Spin It program, the star of the show obviously is the Spin It Pro machine. Um, so this is a tumbler turner. Um, and the, it's a USB powered. So the nice thing about that is that you don't have to feel tethered to a wall plug. You can use a, a battery pack like your phone charger. That's, this is what I use. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then the other thing I love about it too is that this piece right here comes off. You can twist it off. Um, and that means that you can use it for, um, for painting. You can use it for hydro dip tumblers. You can use it for all kinds of things. So for, you know, just to sit it there to dry, you know, whatever you need to do. So having a removable base is really nice. Um, and these spring loaded um, arms here, those are great. They hold that tumbler on very securely. It is not gonna fall off. This can hold up to 32 ounce tumblers. So that's awesome. You can do your big ones that you really wanna do. Um, and you can also do small ones because this can squeeze together so tightly. You can do, you know, smaller bottles and, and jars and things like that. So. Super fun. Um, in addition to that, we have mica powders. Some of them are specialty, like I said, glow in the dark, color changing. Um, we have tons of different colors and sizes of glitter um, available. We have some fun glitter mixes at Michael's. Um, we also have this um, silicone brush, which I recommend grabbing. Um, this is great to work with because the silicone does not um, bond with the uh, resin that you're going to be using. And so you can just peel it right off and clean that up. Um, trying to think. What else? So these are the colors we're gonna to use today. This is a mocha. This is the burnt orange. And then we've got a kind of a medium uh, gold glitter. It's a little bit bigger, but these are just the most gorgeous fall colors. Absolutely love it. So these are the three colors we're gonna work with today. Um, you're gonna to need some 
resin and hardener. This is the kind that we're using that I've, I've got that I'm using. This is my favorite kind. Um, there are other brands out there that are fine to use as well, but you do want to make sure it's clear and it's um, not, you don't want to use UV or, you know, soft resin, make sure it's a hard resin. Um, you're going to need, this is an 18 ounce tumbler, uh, the Art Minds tumbler from Michaels. Um, this one's painted. I went ahead and painted it. Um, but it comes as stainless steel. So this is the, the one that we're gonna use for the class. Um, and I, I also always have like some fine grit sandpaper, um, a craft knife, and then for painting, this is my favorite thing to use, this Rust-Oleum. It's a paint and primer in one. Um, and I, I generally go with white because that gives me like a nice clean canvas to add color to. Um, you can, if you know you're gonna do like a solid gold tumbler, you could paint the base gold. Um, if you're gonna do, you know, a lavender tumbler, you can paint it lavender, you know, whatever. But, but white's a pretty good color because if you're doing multiple colors on the tumbler, it'll all pop, it'll all look great. Um, then if you're working with glitter, this is handy too to have this clear sealer because that holds your glitter in place. So um, because sometimes when you're working with the glitter and um, once you get it on there and you're applying your second coat of epoxy, it can get all over the place. Um, and you, you might like that look, that's fine. But if you want the glitter to stay put, this is super handy, this clear coat. Um, so gloves, you're gonna want, you know, some, vinyl or nitrile gloves. Um, you'll definitely want to work in a well ventilated space. I've got my window open right here. It's a giant window, so plenty of airflow. Um, if you're sensitive to fumes, you might want to wear a mask. We've all got those anyway, so go ahead and pop that on. I always wear something to protect my clothes. I also always have something to protect my work surface. I just use this sheet of paper um, but you could use like a plastic sheet you know some newspaper whatever works for you another thing that's handy to have not necessary but it's kind of handy is a silicone mat mine is covered in glitter but um that's nice because when your um uh excess resin drips down when you're spinning your tumbler um you can just peel it right off of this so um or you can use you know some kind of paper or plastic and then you can toss it so but this is reusable so that's kind of nice um I think that's everything that you're going to need for this class. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your tumbler and you're going to sand it with this, the fine grit sandpaper. Okay, and you don't need to do like massive sanding. You just want to kind of scuff it up some. And 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 to be honest, that's really for the paint. Um, those were the directions for the paint that I used. Um, you, I would definitely take a look at the paint that you're, you're using and look at the directions because it's sometimes it'll say if it's a metallic or shiny surface to scuff it up, to sand it up and that paint will stick better. So that's what I did. Um, this is the paint and primer in one. Um, and I did a couple coats. Um, it doesn't need to look really nice. Obviously you can see it's not a super, super good coverage. The idea is just to give you a canvas to work off of because if you leave it um, metallic, if you leave that stainless steel color, that's gonna come through your glitter. So your glitter is transparent. Um, and so that's gonna, you're gonna see that right through. So you wanna start with a nice clean canvas to add your color to. Um, so once you've done that, you're going to add the tumbler to the, the machine. Now, what I like to do, let's see, here's my tape, is I like to take some masking tape or some washi tape, some kind of low tack tape, and I like to tape off the top around here on the inside. And what that does is it just protects um, the cup from getting the resin inside. Now, if you do get some resin inside there or over the lip of the cup, that's okay. We can deal with that with the craft knife. Um, in fact, I was doing that just before class started. Um, so it's, it's not the end of the world, but you know, this just kind of makes it quicker and easier um, to clean up the cup and get it ready for use. So I just kind of work in chunks, small pieces and just go around and make sure it's nice and tight. Um, I know some people don't, don't do this step and that's okay too. You can do it either way, but all right. So there we go. And then what I do is I squeeze my um, arms in place the cup on there and then I let them go. And then I just slide it on so that I cover these all the way, the arm all the way, so it's covered. And then I, I'm gonna pop this in turn, so I can turn on the power, so I can access the power. And then I'm gonna turn it on. And what I love is that this has 
an adjustable speed dial. So if you need just a little bit of motion or if you need it really spinning hard, um, you can go ahead and, and you know adjust it however you want, okay? So hang on one second, I'm gonna turn that off and fix that tape got stuck underneath there. There we go. All right, so the tape's coming up. Okay, so what I do is I spin it and then I take a look at it from all angles, from the side here, from the top, from the front, you know, I kind of turn it and just make sure that everything's level and straight because that's really important as that resin is um, curing to have a nice straight cup. Otherwise you're gonna get some pooling, you know, that resin's gonna um, gather in places and, and drip a little bit and it's gonna cure kind of funny looking. So you just wanna make sure that that's nice and even and level before you start applying any epoxy. Okay, so we are ready to mix a little bit of epoxy. Now I'm gonna throw on my gloves to protect my fingers. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to mix just two and a half milliliters. And that's because we all we need is enough to stick the glitter on. So that's all we need. So when you're um, sticking the glitter on, you don't need a ton of, um, epoxy. Now there are other ways to stick this glitter on. Let me find a little cup. Um, there are other ways to stick this glitter on. You can use Mod Podge. You can use like, you know, a liquid craft glue. Um, so there are different ways to do it, but I'm, I'm using the epoxy method. Um, and these are really handy to have as well. And they often come with your epoxy. They're little measuring cups. I don't know if you can see. Um, it's got milliliters on there. And that's really handy because um, when you're measuring epoxy, you need to make sure you're pretty darn exact because that will determine how well your epoxy will cure. So we're going for two and a half. Um, so I'm going to just fill one part up halfway and then the other part all the way to two and a half. So I need to just watch that really carefully as I'm pouring it in. Um, so this comes in two parts, the actual resin and then the hardener. So I'm gonna hold this up here so I can see. I don't need very much, just a tad more. Okay, so that's halfway to two and a half. And then let me put that cap on so I don't spill anything. Oop, there we go, one handed. Okay. Now we're gonna pour this in. And this bit is a little harder, this or a little thicker. Okay, so there we go. We've got our two and a half milliliters in there. So one on one, one to one ratio, and it really needs to be pretty exact. And then we're gonna stir. And the directions for this one says stir for two to three minutes. Um, so while we're stirring, I'm gonna just talk a teeny bit more about some tips for using epoxy and then I can answer some questions, okay? So um, like I said, one really important tip is to make sure that your ratio, your one-to-one -one ratio is exact. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do that. You can use a, a measuring cup, you know, it's got measurements on it. Um, you can also use a an, uh, one of those ounce scales, you know, for food, like for, when you're measuring, you're weighing your food. Um, those are help helpful because you can, you know, measure exactly half and then add half more. So that's a good way to do it. Um, but you just need to make sure it's one-to-one. -one. And then as you stir, you don't want to stir too fast because that will cause a lot of air bubbles to, um, to get into the resin. And, you know, you can work with those and kind of get them out, but it just makes it a little harder. So you don't want to stir too fast. Um, and then as you're stirring, you do want to make sure that you scrape the sides so that in the bottom so that you get everything mixed thoroughly together, again, to try to maintain that ratio as closely as possible. And we already talked about, you know, protection with gloves, a mask if you're sensitive to fumes, um, a well-ventilated area, you can turn a fan on, do it outdoors if the weather's good. Um, so those are some options for working with your resin. Now I'm going to um, read some questions. Does it have to be in well ventilated area? Yes, already answered that. Um, amounts again. Okay, so two and a half milliliters total of the resin. So that means 
you know, whatever half of two and a half is, what is that one and a quarter? So um, one and a quarter milliliters of each, um, each part A and B. So um, yes, that's correct. Um, yes, I'm in a well ventilated area. I've got my door, office door and my window open and there's a breeze going across here. If I had the fan on, it would be difficult to hear, but normally I would probably have a fan on or I would do it outside. So well ventilated area. Um, wooden sticks will cause bubbles. That has not been my experience. I think it really has more to do with how quickly you're stirring. Um, so you don't want to stir for too long. So, and the amount of time that you stir is going to depend on the brand of epoxy that you're using. This particular one that I'm using, the clear cast, um, is two to three minutes. And so what you're also, what you're really watching for is when you first mix the two parts together, they sort of become cloudy. And then you also, when you want to make sure that it becomes totally clear and, and that's a good sign. Also, I would rather have you over stir. So stir for too long than under stir, because if you stir for longer than the two to three minutes, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, it doesn't cause any problems. If you stir less than the two to three minutes, you are going to have problems. That, that epoxy isn't going to cure properly. So it's a good idea to, to set a timer. That's my recommendation is to, to set a timer, read your directions. And to be honest, that is probably like my, like my number one um, tip for any kind of craft is read your directions. <laughs> um, if you have a tool or you know whatever, read your directions. All right, so any other questions? Is epoxy better than Mod Podge? I have had better luck with the epoxy method than the Mod Podge, but I know some crafters love the Mod Podge. So I just think you need to make sure that the Mod Podge totally dries. It's completely dry before you do any epoxy. Um, the temperature in the house plays into mix. Yes, so you will be able to see on the directions for your epoxy what the um, temper temperature recommendations are that it needs to be between this temperature and that temperature. So definitely check that as well. Um, do you have to spray paint the cup prior? Uh, yes, I definitely would because the, um, the steel, you know, the stainless steel color will show through the, um, the glitter. Glitter is not opaque, it's transparent. So you'll be able to see that stainless steel color through. Now you may want that look if you're going for a gray or silver tumbler, that probably would work okay. But the, the paint really provides a canvas for your color so that you can, so that you can see those colors that they pop nicely. So good question. Can you begin with a cup that is already painted when you purchase it? Yes, I have done that. Just be sure to clean it off. I clean it off with like a cotton ball and some rubbing alcohol, just to get all the oils and the dust and the debris off that cup before you put the epoxy on. Um, and that's what I did with the stainless steel cup before I um, actually painted it. I, I cleaned it off with some uh, rubbing alcohol um, and a cotton ball. So good question. All right, let me cover my surface here before I go any further. I won't drip on my craft mat. All right, and then I'm gonna add my um, silicone mat right under here to protect my machine. All right, so we've got that ready. Oh, I've already got a little bit of glitter on there. Glitter gets everywhere, it's the gift that keeps on giving. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and I'm going to put this like at a medium speed. I don't need it going super fast, but I don't want it super slow either. And I just usually use the stick and kind of, you know, pour a little bit on, do that, you know, pour a little bit on, do that. And I think I'm going to move to my, um, my brush, my silicone brush, and that's going to help me to spread that out. And we're just going to cover it in a really thin coating. And that's again, just to get that glitter on there um, so that we can add that on. And just cover from the bottom all the way to the top. Let's get a little more on this side here. So we're just kind of pulling from the bottom up to the top. Now I'm right-handed, so that works for me. You may want to go top to bottom if you're left-handed, whatever works for you, as long as you're spreading that around on the whole cup. Um, now, one quick thing to note is this epoxy is 
self leveling. So as it spins, it's going to level itself out. So that's why it's spinning. Uh, because if you just have this cup sitting here, it, you know that epoxy is going to drip off. It's not. It's going to not. It's going to stay in the same place. Not you know. It. I mean, cool in the same place. So hopefully that makes sense. Now you do want to do the bottom because we're going to add some glitter on the bottom as well. Um, now you can, if you want to, you can tape off that bottom and not do the bottom. Like right where that line is there, you can just tape that off and leave that the stainless steel color if you want to. I've done that on some of my tumblers. But this particular one, I really want that beautiful glitter all over the whole thing because it's so stunning. I love the colors of the glitter. So like the mica squirrel tumbler that um, I showed you at the beginning of class, that uh, has a stainless steel bottom. So you can do that. I also know some people who like to tape off the top. So they have a stainless steel lip at the top um, and just put the color in the middle. So it's really up to you. Um, and there are so many tutorials. There's so much inspiration on um, Michael's website. We've got several classes there for making tumblers. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, on their YouTube channel. Um, you know, there are just a ton of, of tips, tutorials, Tumblr making is a hot craft right now, which is a lot of fun. Um, it makes a great gift. That's one thing I wanted to point out is it's a lasting, a long lasting gift. You know, some of the crafts we make are long lasting, you know, really sturdy items that will last for years to come. Some of them, you know, can make cards or whatever, or, or you know, treats that you eat. Um, Food crafts aren't going to last for very long, but they're really fun. But this is a long lasting gift. So, you know, if you've got a teacher, a girlfriend, you know, maybe bridesmaids, this would make a great gift. And you can customize them. That's what I love about these is you can totally customize them. Um, add, you can add vinyl, you know, cut your vinyl with your Cricut and, you know, put, put a quote or a name or, you know, Mickey Mouse ears, whatever you want on these. Um, and you can completely customize them. So that's nice to make them personal. So, all right, so I've got all of the epoxy on here. Now I'm just spreading. I'm just going again, top to bottom, making sure I've got a nice thin coat all around so that that glitter will stick on when we apply it. Um, now, I do know some people who like to use their fingers to spread the epoxy around um, with, you know, their gloved fingers, and that works great, too. You just need to keep in mind that that pair of gloves that you use is going to have to be disposed of before you move on to the next part of your tumbler. So that means multiple pairs of gloves per tumbler. Um, so that's okay if that's what you want to do. I prefer to use my brush so that I can, you know, keep the use of the gloves to a minimum. So, but it's all, it's all preference, personal preference. Okay, and because I have the tape here, I can just kind of swipe that right off the edge um, to make sure I get a nice full coverage there up to the lip of the cup. So, almost there, almost there. I can just see a couple spots that I need to Spread. And you can kind of see, you know, the lights sort of shine on that epoxy and you can see where the gaps are that you need to fill in. So that makes it kind of nice. All right. Okay, we're there. Just make sure that bottom is covered as well. Yep, we're good there. Okay, and one thing you want to watch out for is this bottom area. Um, can sometimes tend it can tend to pull there. So that's why I'm going up from the bottom because more of the epoxy kind of wants to end up there, probably just because of the shape of the tumbler. Um, so I'm just kind of pushing it up. Okay, I think we're ready to go with this. Now I don't again, I don't have to wipe this off because it's silicone. Same thing with the mat under here. This, however, I do want to wipe out because it's just plastic. So as long as the epoxy hasn't started to cure, you can wipe this out and reuse it which is fantastic. They also, I, I believe you can get silicone measuring cups as well, but these plastic ones work great and usually come with your epoxy. So I'm just gonna wipe that out and we can reuse it. All right, it's always good to have several 
paper towels torn off and ready to go and a trash can right at your, you know, disposal. Okay, so we are ready for some glitter. We're gonna start with our mocha. Um, and, oh, you guys, I forgot to get new spoons. So I'm gonna have to reuse my spoon. <laughs> Sorry, let me jump to that for a sec here um, and find my spoon. There's one, there's another. And there's the other. Okay, we're good. I used up all my spins. I usually have a big stash of them on my tumbler cart in here in my office, but I used them all up and forgot to replace them. So I'm just going to wipe these off real quick. This is my mocha. This is my burnt orange. And here's my gold. Okay, so you're going to want one spoon for each color or glitter or one something that you can sprinkle it with. Um, some people like to use um, bottles, containers with a sprinkle head, but for this particular um, design, because it's got these kind of striations, um, these swirls sort of, we're going to use spoons because that, that contains the glitter kind of into these stripes. So that's what I would use. I recommend that. So we're going to start with the mocha. This is a fine glitter. Um, and I'm just going to scoop out a spoonful. And I'm going to start at the bottom. And as it turns, I'm just going to sprinkle up to the top. And we're going to get that, that sort of twist. Okay, and then I'm going to stop there, wait for it to come back around, and just keep going until I get a nice full coverage. Um, and it doesn't have to be a perfect stripe. Um, that's the nice thing about this design is it allows for some kind of organic shapes to happen. So it's not going to be perfectly striped. If you're going for perfect stripes, there are ways to do that, um, but this is not that way. So kind of fun. I think we're just about there. You just want to get a good solid stripe. And it's okay to have, you know, little bits hanging off the end there. Okay, I'm going to let it go around one more time and just work those ends. I think we're good in the middle there. Just need a little bit more coverage up here at the very top. Okay, so there's our mocha swirl. Wipe that over off. All right, and now let's go for our burnt orange. I'm gonna do that next to the mocha. Um, and you can do this same technique with any color scheme. You know, if you've got a little princess and you wanna do pink and purple and aqua, you can do that. I mean, there's, you know, Christmas, you can do your reds and your greens, whatever you want. Okay, so we're just gonna lay this one next to that mocha one. I think I'm gonna go a little wider with that. That one's not as wide as I was wanting it to be. There we go. Wait for that to come back around. Clean up the bottom here. Just sprinkling. Okay, now one tip about the glitter that's falling down. Um, so I am not doing this just because it takes a lot of extra time for the one hour that we have, but when you're creating, um, you can totally use separate pieces of paper to catch each color of glitter, and then you can dump it back into your glitter container. So that's a good way to save on your glitter so you're not wasting glitter. Um, I would normally do that, but again, like for this class, um, that takes some extra time. So I want to make sure we have time to, to show all the steps. So I'm not catching my glitter separately today, but usually I would. So let's wait for that to come back around. Just get that edge. Okay. So I'm gonna thicken that up a little bit. Looking at that, I want to get a little more coverage with this color. So we're just gonna pull that out a little bit more. See how that looks when it comes back around. Yeah, let's pull that out a little more. Oops, that was more than I meant to shake on there. Okay, and the cool thing about this particular technique is that um, 
you really kind of can't go wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to look a little different every time, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go back to the mocha and we're just going to pull the mocha out this way a little further. A little more. Now you could do thinner stripes if you wanted to and have more. I'm only doing three big ones, um, but if you wanted to, you definitely could do lots of you know, thinner stripes in these three colors. Some more glitter. Widen that a little bit. Let's take a look if it comes back on. Make sure we got that. Okay. Cool. All right. I'm happy with that. Okay. So let's put these two out of the way. And now we're going to finish off with our gold. And this one's again, this is more of a medium. Glitter is a little bigger, a little chunkier. So we'll talk about how to deal with chunky glitter as we're doing this. So when you're dealing with chunky glitter, um, you're going to need, need to take a few extra steps um, because it tends to not want to lay flat. And it also tends to not want to give you full coverage. So one tip could be that you would start this gold layer with an extra fine gold glitter and then do the thicker glitter on top. So if you do that, you're gonna to need to do the thicker gold on a second epoxy layer. Um, that's gonna kind of add to the bulk of your cut, but it is definitely doable. You can definitely do that. Um, and I'll show you in a minute how to kind of deal with that, with the chunky glitter once we get this covered. Um, but I think it looks really cool if you can get it, you know, working for you. Chunky glitter is very cool on the cup. All right. One more round, and then I think we've got this covered. Let's get those edges and right there. That's it. Okay, great. So let's let that go around. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to, I call it smooshing. I'm going to smoosh the glitter, the chunky glitter down. Just gently press into it with my fingers. and wait for it to come back around. And then I'm just kind of working my way from the bottom up to the top and I'm just smushing that so it's laying flat. Um, and here's why, because if, you're, if your chunky glitter is not laying pretty flat and you've got chunks of glitter sticking up, um, that means you're gonna have bumps in your resin when you, when you do your resin coating, your final coating. And then what you have to do with that is you have to sand that sucker down and you have to redo coating until you get a nice smooth um, finish to your cup. So the smooshing is really important to get a nice flat surface for your cup, a fine, nice final flat finish. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. I think I missed a few down there. All right, almost there. Isn't that pretty though? As you watch that going around, you can see the light catching that glitter. It is so pretty. Look at that sparkle. All right, one more time. Right there. Down here at the bottom. And then I think we're good. Okay, now there was one area um, where I wanted to add just a hair of epoxy right here. I've got a little bit still in my stick, so I'm just going to add that there. And then it, as it comes around, I'm just going to take a teeny bit of this burnt orange and sprinkle that on to cover that little bit at the bottom there. One more time, just make sure I got that really good. Okay, so now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna stop this for a second. Um, and I'm going to twist this off. Of the base. And I'm gonna show you how to cover the bottom. All 
bag. I like to go carefully because I don't want it to fall when it's got, you know, all that glitter in it. Okay. So I just need to pull this out. All right. So if you notice down here, I've got these three glitter colors together. So I'm just going to mix those. Now you can do this one color if you just want to do it, you know, like the gold or the the burnt orange or, or mocha, that's fine. But I like to do a mix at the bottom. Um, so I'm just gonna mix this kind of up. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tap this down into that. It's gonna pick up the glitter on the bottom. Now, because there's an indent there, a little indent at the bottom, I need to just kind of sprinkle some on to finish that off and make sure I get good coverage around the edges too. There we go. So very cool. So the bottom's got a glitter mix and then we've got the three on the top. So now I'm gonna place this back on my machine and twist that back into place. Oops, that needs to go there. This little um, bolt there lines up and then I'm just gonna twist it into place. I always have to say to myself, righty tidy, lefty Lucy, <laughs> so I know which direction I'm going, but you're just going to twist it until that's tight. And then I'm just going to turn this on. I'm going to actually move it up here so that we can um, move on to the next step and let that spin for a while. Um, and so this particular epoxy, this will need to spin for 24 hours to fully cure. I'm sorry, this will need to cure for 24 hours. It needs to spin for six to eight hours um, before you can stop it spinning, okay? And then you can take this off and just place it down and let it dry. But so I'm gonna get that going. Um, and it, it can go, you know, a little faster while it spins and just let that sit and spin for a while. Um, so I'm gonna take care of this glitter. And if you want, you can save that, you know, as a glitter mix, as a fun mix to use for other projects. Um, and while that's happening, let's, uh, let's answer some questions. All right, so how firm of pressure do you use when pressing on the chunky glitter? I don't push very hard. Um, it, it, really, it really moves pretty easily. So I don't really push hard. Like if you're pushing the, the cup down on the machine, then you're pushing too hard. Just kind of, you know, press lightly into it. Um, does the attachment work with the older version of the spinet? Yes, it does. So you, if you have the older version of the spinet, you can actually buy just the attachment um, and add that onto your um, machine. Sorry, my AirPod fell out. There we go. Um, let's see, when do we do the bottom? Okay, so just answer that one, show you that. Um, any other questions? How long should we keep the tape on? So I usually, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that. I usually like to take the tape off um, after the six to eight hours. Um, so when it's done spinning, I sort of try to peel that tape off gently. If you can't get to it safely without messing up your cup, just leave it on there because you can use a craft knife. This will cut through that thin layer of um, epoxy at the top of your cup. So you can get that off if you need to. Um, so good question. Um, any other questions that I missed? Can pictures be applied after the paint has dried? Yes, you can do pictures. Um, I would use the Mod Podge for that. That's a great time to use the Mod Podge. You can also do water slide paper. We, we offer a water slide paper that's available at Michael's. Um, so you can print photos, um, images, you know, whatever you want on directly onto the water slide paper and then transfer that onto your cup. Um, over a layer of paint. How did you apply the paint? Good question. So the paint that I use is a, um, it's a spray paint. So this is the Rust-Oleum paint and primer in one. This is my favorite. There's, you know, other paints work fine, but this is the one my go-to. Um, so that's what I use and I just apply it. So what I do is I turn the cup upside down, you know, I'll put it down this way on some kind of a protective plastic sheet or something and I'll, I'll spray it that way and let it dry and just follow the directions. Um, what is the color changing material you talked about? Okay, good question. So um, that is, let me see if I can grab some. I've got some right here. Um, it's called mica powder. Um, and mica powder is, is used widely in the craft world coloring. Um, so here's some of it. We've got several different sets in really beautiful colors. 
this is the color changing. So this we've got some that changes color um, in the sun and some that changes color um, uh, based on temperature. So if you've got like your coffee in there or hot cocoa or whatever, hot apple cider, um, it'll change color. So that's kind of cool. We also have some glow in the dark, which is really fun with kids. Um, this is just a nice pretty pearlized mica powder white. Um, so there's, there's lots of different colors, but it's just basically a pigment dye um, that you can use to color your epoxy. So you would mix that into your epoxy before you apply it to your cup. Um, so that's a good question. Okay, so when complete, will the cup be dishwasher safe? No, it will not. Even if you don't decorate your cup, a stainless steel cup is not dishwasher safe. It always needs to be hand washed. Good question. Um, so you would add the vinyl decal. If you're doing a vinyl decal, I'm not gonna do one today, but if you were gonna add one, you would do it after you've finished your, your complete last coat. You do one coat, then you put the sticker on, and then you do another coat of epoxy. So you would need to do two final coats of epoxy if you have the vinyl sticker, and that way the sticker never comes off. So that's kind of nice because a lot of these, you know, these vinyls that claim to be permanent, they're, they're pretty sticky, but they're really not permanent permanent, right? So if you put that extra layer of epoxy over that um, vinyl sticker, it will stay on forever. Um, yeah, so that's when you add the, um, the vinyl. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll finish this uh, cup up. So what I did is once that, um, after the 24 hours, once the glitter was dry, uh, the glitter layer was dry. Then what I did is I took it outside, um, put you know a sheet, protective sheet down, and I sprayed the cup with this clear gloss. Um, and it it seals the glitter so that the glitter doesn't move because um, once you put that uh, second layer of epoxy on and you're brushing it on, sometimes that glitter will spread and it'll it'll move into the areas where you don't want it. And that might be okay. You might like that look, like to be honest with you, that's what I did here. Like you can kind of see, I did not use the um, seal for the glitter. So you can see that the gold mostly is what moved and it kind of spread to the other colors. And I, I like, I think it looks cool. So you could definitely do that. If you really want that glitter to stay exactly where you put it, you'll need to seal it with this. Um, and follow the directions on here for, um, you know, for your dry times and for how, when and how to put on your different coats. I usually do one good solid coat. I don't usually do more than that. I found that just one coat holds that glitter just fine uh, because it is, this one is double coverage. So it's, it's a really good coverage. Um, you do need to wait the full 24 hours. I think this says to fully dry. You do need to wait because if you don't, you're going to have problems with your epoxy um, curing if you've got something that's not fully dry underneath it. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to tape off this cup and we're going to just um, add a second coat. So I did, I did 15 milliliters to cover that glitter and now I'm going to do another 15 milliliters. And the reason why I like to do that is because I find if I try to do like a full 30 um, coverage, sometimes it pools and sometimes you get, you know, bulging and um, that epoxy just doesn't lay nice and flat. But if you do 15 and 15, um, you can get a really nice smooth coat. And part of the reason I do that too is because the glitter, um, sometimes you need to sand it a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and cover this up and then we'll just do a light sanding before we add that next coat of epoxy. Let's see where we are on time. Okay, we've got 15 minutes, that should be good because this second coat is really easy and quick. Just gonna pop this on to protect my cup. Um, now, if you don't mind getting epoxy on your machine, um, you know, it doesn't, I mean, it shouldn't really hurt it. Um, you know, you don't have to tape this up. You know, if your epoxy drips on your machine and that doesn't bother you, that's fine. I, I prefer to try to keep it as clean as I can. Um, I mean, the only thing I could see like happening is if epoxy dripped into here or in there, then you might, it might affect how well it spins. So that's the only danger I can think of, but most of it just preference. Okay, push that down, make sure that's nice and secure. All right, so squeeze, pop this on, and push it up. All right, now I've got to put this in. And 
turn it on and just check and make sure it's nice and level. There we go. Check the overhead. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. So I'm going to slow this down a little bit. And I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm just going to kind of brush up. And I'm not pushing very hard. This is a very light sanding. Again, this is just so that that epoxy kind of really grabs on to the layer underneath it. Now, if you have bumps, if you have glitter that's sticking up, you're going to probably want to sand a little bit harder and not on the machine. You're going to want to hold the cup while you're sanding to kind of smooth down those bumps a little bit. But I'm just kind of roughing this up a little bit so that that epoxy really grabs on that second layer. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hit the bottom a little bit there. Now you do want to be careful because if you sand really hard, you're gonna sand the color right off of that glitter. Um, so you don't want to do that unless you have problems and you're going to just recoat it with glitter then you know you're fine all right so let's mix up some more epoxy and this is going to be 15 milliliters so i'm going to look here on my cup find the 15 and then i'm going to use there's a seven and a half mark actually on this cup which is really convenient so i'm just going to fill one part to the seven and a half and then the next part up to the 15. so we'll start with this one And pour that up to seven and a half. Now, there are times when you would want to use more epoxy, a little bit more, um, and have a little bit of a thicker coating, like if you're doing a swirl. Um, like we did a mica swirl tumbler with one class here, and you actually are using your heat tool to move the epoxy around on the cup after you apply it. And that's when you get that really cool swirling motion. Um, so that's when you're going to want to have a pretty good amount of epoxy on your cup at one time. But if I don't need to do that, then I usually try to kind of divide it up. So, okay, so let's mix this for two to three minutes and I will check questions while we're doing that. Do you have to let it spin for six to eight and sit for 24? Yes, good question. This particular epoxy, the directions say to sit, uh, to spin for six to eight and then sit for 24. It varies based on the kind of epoxy you're using. Um, yeah, this is a different cup. <laughs> so yeah, good question. So I, I prepared two, two different cups, you know, at different phases of the process so that we could hurry this along so we're not waiting for the <laughs> 24 hours. Um, what grid of sandpaper are you using? Oh man, you know, I don't really know. It's it's a it's a very fine one. Um, let me see if it's on the back. It might be on the back. This is just my what I always use for my oh 150. 150 fine grit. Um, Wait 24 hours before the second coat. Yes, you do. You need to wait 24 hours between each coat. Um, you are going to let your cup spin for the full amount of time that it needs to spin. So this part you're going to have to watch back. Um, and Michael's is so awesome about sticking their uh, sticking these up on their YouTube channel pretty quickly after we're done. So you'll be able to um, have that. Uh, available very soon. And you're also welcome to take notes as I'm going along to the second part so that you can um, remember what to do later when your cup is done. But I believe that video should be up very soon. They usually, I think it's 24 hours, correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, but it gets up pretty fast. Um, yes, 24 hours. Yes, thank you. Um, so that's great. And again, um, you can also go and check out their YouTube channel now um, in the 
um, online classes playlist. There's a uh, several other um, YouTube, uh, Tumblr videos, Tumblr classes that we've done. Okay, so after the glitter first coat, how many more coats of epoxy do you use? So after the glitter first coat, I like to do two thinner coats of epoxy um, after that. So that's three total um, because I, I feel like it you get a better, um, smoother look to your cup if you do that. You could also do one layer of 30 milliliters um, as well but 30 to 32, you know, just depends. But what I've found is that it tends to um, cool up sometimes if you have a lot of epoxy on there. So you just have to watch that cup carefully and make sure that it's fully level and that you're, you know, if you see any cooling, you might have to adjust where your cup is, you know, which is, you know, you can't, you have to sort of like put a shim underneath the base or, you know, whatever, or put a shim underneath this end to kind of, make sure that cup is fully level. So I don't know, I prefer to do two thinner coats. So that's how I work. But I know I know a lot of other tumbler makers just do one full 30 ounce um, coating after the glitter. So good question. So Michael's epoxy kit says it only needs to spin for four hours. So after four hours, do we um, No, The four hours is just how long it needs to be spinning so that it cures leveling so it levels while it cures um if it wasn't spinning for the four hours you would get like these drips on your cup right you have these drip shapes we call them bulges or bulging or pooling so it does need to spin for the full four hours and then depending on the directions on your epoxy read the direction um, and that'll tell you full cure time most most uh, epoxy, the full cure time is 24 hours. So, but definitely read the directions of your epoxy that you're using. Um, so good question. That's a good question. So when we talk about um, cure times, there's like, you know, a cure time as far as like how long it needs to spin. There's a cure time as to when you can touch it. And then there's a full cure time with when it's completely fully cured. So kind of like paint, you know, sometimes you can touch paint after an hour, but you don't want to like handle it because it'll kind of, you know, won't stay on very well. So, but definitely like I think I said in the beginning, you might not have heard if you joined us later is my biggest tip is read the directions, read the directions, read the directions because each each epoxy is a little different, each paint's a little different, you know, so just make sure you're reading the directions carefully and that'll generally answer a lot of your questions. And some of the brands of epoxy will have um, videos on their website that you can look for, you know, tips and answering questions and troubleshooting and stuff like that. Um, so the speed depends on what you're doing. Um, like I have my cup that we, the, the first cup where I finished all the glitter, that's spinning pretty fast um, because I'm not trying to apply something as it's going. Um, so, you know, it just depends. If you're applying, I would slow it down. But once you've finished applying and you're just curing, I would speed it up and let it go a little faster. So this is kind of at a medium low speed right now. And I think my epoxy is ready to go. All right, so we're gonna apply this and then I'm gonna show you one really great way to get the bubbles out so you have a nice clear coat. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna use my fingers for this because it's a little quicker that way. Generally, I'll, I'll use my brush, but I want to speed this up a bit because we're getting to the end of our time. Um, and so we're just going to spread this around. Make sure you leave a little bit for the bottom. Mm, this is so pretty. I love it. Again, these make great gifts for teachers, for girlfriends. Um, like a bridal shower, like a mom-to-be baby shower all kinds of fun stuff. And especially as we're getting into the um, cooler weather, you know, the hot drinks are coming out. We're doing our apple cider or hot cocoa, all of our favorite coffee drinks. And these are great for those because they'll keep it either cold or hot depending on what you're drinking. So again, we're just going bottom to top, making sure that's a nice smooth level um, coating. Every single bit is covered. And um, making sure that it's nice and smooth. All right, let's get a little bit on the bottom here. Mm 
So just kind of dip my finger in and smooth it around on the bottom. And on the edges there. And again, you do want to uh, move from the bottom to the top here as we're smoothing this epoxy out because the bottom is usually where that epoxy tends to want to cool up and collect. So move from the bottom to the top as you're spreading it around. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Oh, there's a little spot right there. And I wait for it to come back around. It feels like it needs a little more. Right there. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to work for a minute, just kind of smoothing this around. Um, oh, and, and one thing you do want to pay attention to is the work time on your epoxy. Every epoxy is gonna have a different work time. This particular one is 45 minutes. So from the time you finish during that epoxy, you have 45 minutes before it starts to cure on you. So that's just your work time. So you just need to be aware of that as you're working. So, and again, you look at your epoxy that you're using and, and it should tell you what your work time is. All right, so I'm gonna take these gloves off. And I'm going to let that spin, and I'm going to use a heat gun. I've got one right here. Just a heat tool, okay? Um, and we're just going to give it a little shot once around. It's going to go once around, and I'm just going to go back and forth and keep that moving. I'm going to keep it about six inches away from my cup, and that is going to help pop the bubbles. Any bubbles that ended up in that epoxy, that's just going to pop those so you get a really nice, uh, beautiful finish. So... Let that go around like once, maybe twice. Keep it moving, and that's going to pop those bubbles. Okay. All right. Um, so now I would just let this sit and spin for the six to eight hours. Um, that this epoxy needs, and then I would I can take it off, you know, the base, remove the tape if I can, carefully, and um, just let it sit and cure for the full 24. So, um, okay, so we got that. The bubbles, the secret to the bubbles is your heat gun. Okay, so that's gonna help get it out. Um, let's see. Yeah, so, okay, so review real quick. Um, original coat of epoxy, two and a half milliliters total. So that's one and a quarter milliliters of each part. Um, and that's just a really thin coat so you can stick your glitter on. So once you get your glitter on, after that, you let that spin. And I'm just talking about this, okay? This is the glitter, the, the resin I'm using. So the directions for this say, let it spin for six to eight hours. Then you can take it off your machine and just set it dry to dry for the full 24. Um, and that includes the six to eight. So it's six to eight plus, you know, 18 or whatever it is after that. Um, and then once you do that, you're gonna spray with this clear gloss um, sealer to seal that glitter so it stays in place. So it doesn't move when you add your final coats of epoxy. You have two options for your final coats of epoxy. You can do one 30 milliliter coat and that's 30 total. So 15 and 15 of each part. Um, and you can just do it that way. Um, I, with this glitter, I, I usually do two coats after the initial coat. So the second way to do it is to do 15 milliliters, let that spin for six to eight and then cure fully for 24. And then do a little sanding, light sanding, with, you know, 150 grit, 180 grit sandpaper, and then do another 15 milliliter coat to finish that off to get it nice and smooth. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, six hours in between layers. Nope, six hours of spinning. And then you can take it off the machine or turn off the spinner and let it sit for full 24. There has to be a full 24 in between each coat. Okay, so hopefully that helps. And again, the most important thing is to read the directions on your brand of epoxy. That's the most important thing um, because it might vary, you know, from epoxy to epoxy. Most of the epoxies I've worked with um, it's a full 24 hour cure. So, um, so good question.
All right, thank you guys so much for joining me today. It's been so fun, um, Tumblr making. It is, you know, it, it takes some planning and it takes some time, but the actual time that you need to be doing something really is not long. Um, so um, it just, it, it needs to sit. So you, you know, you can just plan ahead and give yourself a few days to make one. And they're gorgeous, they're wonderful gifts, they're long lasting. Um, customizable, personalizable, whatever you call that. So again, thanks so much. Check out all the spinach accessories and, and all the fun um, things that you can make at Michael's in store or at michaels.com. And I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.